Good evening guys, it's Africa again, from Africa here, Sieta Talks the channel, welcome to our channel, and I appreciate for those of us who are, who are watching us, and I want to appreciate your comments and also good feedback which I'm getting from you uh, in my DM on how we can make this channel uh, very interactive and also helpful to each one of us. So guys, welcome to Sweja Talks channel on our YouTube. Kindly if you have not subscribed, I welcome you to subscribe and also uh, I, I, I encourage you to share with other people who can join us and we make this channel or we take this channel to the next level. Welcome guys. Today we have a very important issue which we are going to discuss. And it's very interesting. Hope you find good time. Take your seat. Guys, welcome to our video. And our video is going to deal about, uh, it's about a very important aspect in our life. Previously, I've shared videos on uh, how our heart functions and also how uh, drugs affect our, even our heart uh, functions. So today I'm going to share something very important on also on the what you call circulatory system that is where blood is involved and actually today we're going to talk about uh, blood transfusion. I don't know if you have ever heard of this, uh, you have had exchange of, 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 of blood, if you have ever donated blood to, for someone. Here in Africa, we have special days for donation of, uh, of the blood and uh, it is, the blood saves a life. That's the, most of the time, that's the motto of the, of, the, of the blood. A donor is a person who donates or gives blood for others to use. Especially we have, uh, depending on the group of uh, blood which is needed, the people with the blood group O, we have people with blood group A, we have people with blood group AB, and at the same time we have people who are racers positive and also racers negative. And here in instance in Africa, like here in Kenya, the racers negative uh, blood is very rare and is really a life-saving kind of thing which, uh, uh, which helps to donate to someone. So uh, if we are watching this uh, this channel and if we are watching this video, I want to encourage you that you give your blood or you donate your blood and that means a lot for someone who is uh, who is really in need of, uh, of the blood so that we get to accomplish also save a life in a special way as we're going to see shortly. So blood, uh, blood transfusion, uh, that is uh, blood, we, we always transfuse human blood or somebody gets, uh, that's a, gets blood from someone else who has donated, I say that donor is the person who gives the blood so that in the intention that someone else can really benefit uh, from, uh, from, from him or her. So that blood normally in Kenya is not actually sold, so you give for free because the, uh, blood is very precious and it really saves uh, life, uh, which is very important. So why should someone get a uh, blood uh, transfusion? First, the reason why uh, one should get a blood transfusion or the criteria of getting one uh, get blood transfusion when someone has low red blood cells. In my previous vid video about sickle cell anemia, I shared about the normal uh, uh, red blood cells and abnormal red blood cells. So kind of if you have not watched the video, you can uh, check on it uh, so that you can find out what are the normal uh, uh, red blood cells. So actually, the blood cell, the red blood cells are very important because these, they show the level of the blood in the level of, of, of blood also because the red blood cells call the hemoglobin and normally before you get transfused 
you get checked on the on the on the aspect of uh, blood levels so if you if you are checked by the blood levels the hemoglobin level and uh, is low that is when you get transfused uh, another reason why you should get uh, transfused is when uh, you get that you had you have had a blood loss uh, due to surgery or a trauma like you got an accident that is when you get uh, transfused so it's very important that uh, you you get to know the reason as to why someone gets uh, gets uh, gets uh, uh, transfused so uh, another reason why sh someone should get uh, transfused is when there is production or a reduction in the production of the red blood cells like when somebody is an anemic somebody may who has also uh, a renal problem or a kidney problem uh, so they, most of the time they get uh, someone can get transfused and uh, somebody who has cancer is also a good reason as to why one gets uh, transfused cancer because it, it takes a lot of blood in the in the system so it's very important that uh, where that you get uh, transfused so it is very important that uh, when you get transfused uh, that uh, those uh, the transfusion is uh, for replenishing the red blood cells so that uh, we get to get the, the you to the level of the red blood cells to where they it is supposed to be to be to be to be to be made so red blood cells are very important in the body because their main role in the body is to carry oxygen and also remove carbon dioxide in the body is a way the body works in which uh, it really carries oxygen to the from, especially from the lungs there's a special system we will look at it at some point which carries the oxygen from the from where well, as you as we breathe and supplies that oxygen to the vital organs of the body I've, uh, in my previous video i've shared about the vital organs like the heart the brain especially the brain loves oxygen and when you get that the the the, the patient or the person uh, doesn't get enough oxygen or is a hypoxic so uh, something happens or the problem occurs to the the brain without oxygen at the same time if the blood doesn't get to the brain where it's supposed to get with some for some reason you get that uh, that person gets uh, now the toxins get to accumulate in the body so carbon dioxide is not well uh, gotten out of the well of the system so blood transfusion helps in promotes that oxygen exchange and also carbon dioxide removal from the body and that is the main work of the red blood cells so guys uh, normally we have the normal levels of the hb or blood levels that's hemoglobin levels that's what we check uh, to know the RBCs, which are the body or red blood cells in the body. For men, we have 14 to 18 grams per deciliter, that is for the male. And for the female, if you have between 12 to 16 grams per deciliter, that is a normal kind of uh, hemoglobin level. So those values are very important to give us a, a benchmark on why somebody should get uh, transfused. So, guys, for uh, before someone gets uh, transfused, there is something which is done at the hospital level where we prepare or somebody prepares that blood to be available for, for the patient. Especially the nurses do a very great role in administering uh, those, uh, uh, that blood and there are prerequisites to meet before one gets uh, transfused. So it's very important, something called uh, GXM or uh, blood cross match is done in, in most of the time in most hospitals in Africa, they are done in the lab where cross match is done. So, and that blood normally after, donate, after you donate your blood is tested for like uh, things like uh, HIV, hepatitis and other things to exclude other infections which you may have. So that when we that that blood is given to the patient, the patient has to get other problems. So we need to solve problems. We don't want the patient to get into more problems. So cross match is done from that blood which you have donated and it has been screened by the blood bank. 
and also delivered to the hospital setting so cross match is done at the at the lab level level so things like uh, labeling from the blood bank is done so so that the the bag shows the blood type and also shows uh, uh, the, the blood type i mean by if it is a positive a negative versus negative versus positive whether it is a whether it's B or AB or O, and also the resus factor is also written there. And also the, 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 the date of donation is also written there, and also the date of expiry. So those are the special kind of things which are put on the, in that special bag for blood, where one gets to know, uh, or the lab pers person or the lab technologist gets to know the blood group of the patient. You take a blood from the patient so that you check the blood group and also take the, 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 the blood which has been donated so that you cross match. Because uh, that matching of the blood is very important because if we don't match that kind of, uh, if matching of blood is not there, we get into a lot of, uh, of problems. So blood bank does the compatibility thing, uh, finds the group of the blood, but the cross match, cross match of the blood is done at the lab level, especially here in Africa, so that the patient gets to, to know, uh, or the, 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 the person going to administer the, the blood gets to know the compatibility factor of the, of the, of the blood. So on, uh, on the, most importantly, we should know the blood compatibility level, as I said, we saw that we don't give the, the, the patient the wrong blood, uh, so, so that as much as the blood is screened and also is the right blood is the positive, we also need to know how the, the patient's blood group, so that we give as appropriate. If we give a different kind of, uh, of blood, the patient will react to that blood and we may have uh, we may even end up losing the patient if that cross compatibility factor is not considered. And also, before administering those uh, the, the, the the blood, we have hospital policies which govern. These are the way the the protocols which are observed before you give uh, the blood. So protocols in the hospital should be adhered to by whoever gets if the lab person uh, should follow the protocol on how to cross match and also on how to give the blood to the person going to administer to the patient. So very importantly, before uh, administering the, the blood to the patient, uh, we should have an informed consent. The patient should sign that they, I have agreed, I want, I will, I will uh, really like to get uh, the blood uh, from, uh, from, this, uh, for the, from this hospital. So that it can help me. So a form is signed. Normally, there's a special form which is signed by the patient that I've agreed. I will, uh, I will be, I will be getting the blood because uh, blood transfusion is like a treatment which a patient can can uh, can agree to. Here in Africa, we have also people don't believe in blood transfusion, so you can sign against the medical advice that in case you need blood, you don't need to be transfused and you sign against, against your, your name there so that uh, you don't uh, get to legal, um, legal, legal issues on, on the administration of the, the blood like another treatment. The patient is very important that he gets to agree on the treatment and also on that donation of the blood. So the patient is also asked for an allergy. Uh, if the patient has any allergies, and also health, health of previous transfusion. If the patient has ever received any transfusion, because the patient can tell you, yes, I received the, the transfusion, and things changed, they go, went haywire, or it went well. When, when did, I receive, did you receive your transfusion? You can say last year, what was the reason why you received such kind of, the, of things. And in some protocols, there are plain medication which are given to patients or their medication given the patient before administration of the blood so that to make sure uh, everything goes well. Um, another thing which is very important in the preparation after the informed consent, 
we have the patients uh, uh, getting the IV access, especially Gaichi Chin, uh, that is the kind of cannula which is used to make sure or you use a, uh, a bigger kind of gauge for the patients. The cannula is the tube which is used to administer blood to the patient through the vein because the blood is administered through the vein. So IV access, a large IV access is very, very important. So also, whoever is going to administer the, the blood is very important that you, you take a... So the IV uh, special IV tubing is very important, the tube which is used to administer. Uh, the blood because it is very special uh, it's called white tubing and it has a filter inside which can filter other components which may not be necessarily very important for the patient so that we get we give the we give the patient the best kind of uh, of those uh, gets the best from the blood so there's a special filter in those giving sets a uh, blood giving set so that uh, the patient gets the best through that uh, yeah, from, from that blood and also it's important to have also a, a normal saline 0.9 normal saline which will help you in a, something which I'm going to explain uh, over the same so after all that is done the concept is done the patient history is taken very well uh, and the the things are put in order uh, so uh, it is uh, it is very important that whoever is going to transfer the patient and most of the time it's the nurses who transfuse uh, the nurses they will transfuse will transfuse the patients so it is um, it is recommended that you take one unit from the lab at a time you don't get like a patient is going to get three pints you get three pints at, at, at the same time unless it is very necessary especially in control situations like in theater or in, a, in ICU where you can where the pro, as the protocols dictate where you can get more than one unit but normally a patient gets you get one unit at a time so and uh, before you start the transfusion the transfusion and uh, uh, before you start the transfusion it is good you monitor the pay, the patient you check the 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 baseline uh, vital signs for the patient first and record them so that in case of any changes from the normal you can know you from the baseline you can know there is a problem somewhere or something is developing somewhere so it's very important after you prepare the, those things you get uh, uh, you get to call the the blood bank or the lab to supply you with the blood for that patient and when you collect the, 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 the and when you are going to collect the blood verify with the one who did the compatibility test blood compatibility with that person and also when you pick them to the to the ward also it is good it's recommended that the two registered nurses confirm and also find that the dates the blood group the expiry date and uh, any other details which are needed match with the patient who you are going to transfuse because at the end of the day it's not about getting the blood and also transfusing the patient. You, you are also held responsible on what you are doing uh, with, the, with your patient. So verification is very important to do. Uh, and as I've, I've said, it's very, very important to do one unit at a, at a time. So, and the, the blood transfusion, when it is started, uh, always remember the blood should end within two to four to four hours. If it goes beyond that, the, that means the blood can be, uh, you are predisposing the patient to septicemia or infection. So make sure your line is working very well and also put your things in order so that you don't delay uh, the patient in getting that blood within two hours uh, to, four, to, four, to four hours. And if the patient is going to get a lot of those, uh, uh, a lot of blood, uh, there's a special way you can warm that blood because you don't want to a patient to get into uh, to get into a problem. So especially getting hyper hypothermic response from the from the patient. So normally you warm that for the patient. That's in the controlled areas, as I said, like in theater. 
is a, way, a special way that blood is formed so that the patient doesn't get into hypothermic, hypothermic uh, kind of uh, response. So very important so that you verify uh, whatever you're going to give the patient. So what you verify, you verify the doctor, you verify the doctor's order as appropriate. Also, you identify the patient's uh, identification and blood banking information. And also, you also verify the patient's uh, blood type and the patient's uh, donor, donor type. The, the would, whoever donated, what was the blood, uh, blood group and who is the one who is receiving, what is the blood group. Also, you check on the RSS factor because the, your patient may be O positive and what, whatever the donor gave is O negative, that means there is a compatibility issue. So you check, uh, you check on the, that uh, RSS factor, which is very important, which can be either positive or negative. So if your patient is O positive and you have O positive uh, blood, that means there is compatibility and the, the, the blood is safe to give uh, the patient. Very importantly, lastly, it is very important to, to also uh, find out the expiry date of that blood because we don't want to give the patient expired blood. If it's expired, you are exposing the patient to what we call septicemia or a blood infection and which may be very detrimental to the, to the patient at the same time. So very important, you should, uh, when, before starting the, the transfusion, so it's very important that you check uh, the temperature of the patient within those 15 minutes of commencing the, the blood, you should be with the patient, the, the, vital, the vital signs, and also monitor for the signs of, uh, of any problem. And also, as before also you start this kind of, uh, of, of transfusion, you should explain to, uh, to your patient to explain to you if uh, you, you explain to the patient if there are any signs of, uh, or the, any signs of reaction of the blood. And these are the things like sweating, chills, chest pain, shortness of breath, headache, and also the, the back pain. It's very important that you explain the same to the, to the patient. So, so uh, you, you check on the, you, the, if the patient reports to you uh, during the transfusion about sweat, sweating, about chills, about chest pain, about, about itch, itching, about shortness of breath, about headache, about back pain, about nausea, nausea and vomiting. So it's very important that you stop uh, the, the, that transfusion and watch for other things, uh, which is very important for, for the patients. So when you start the blood transfusion, uh, you should check on the patient should you should start on the low uh, droplet uh, dropping rate. That is, they say most of the time the most common practice is two ml uh, per minute. So it's very important that you get your patient uh, in this uh, two uh, two ml per per minute, so that you get the patient to get the proper. So guys, when you start the transfusion, it should be started at 2 ml per, per minute. Uh, within those five minutes, you monitor those, uh, uh, the vitals after five minutes, you see if the patient starts uh, to get high, uh, high rate, which can be normal because you are, you are getting the patient some fluid and also the heart is, uh, is working at that time. So at 15 minutes, you, you check the patient if the vitals are normal, that is the pressure, temperature, and also the breathing is okay, then you can increase your your, your blood. And if there are no signs of uh, there, there, there are signs of uh, uh, blood uh, reaction, which I've mentioned, if you don't see any of those signs there, you can increase the rate because you want that blood to end within uh, two to four hours as appropriate. So at that minute also, you check the vitals, if they are okay, you continue monitoring the patient. At one hour also, you check the vitals and also see how the patient is doing. Then hourly, 
till the blood ends you also check uh, the patient for any reaction of the of the blood and also at the end of the blood after one hour also you check the patient because we have after reactions after blood transfusion reactions which can be also be very fatal for the patient so you monitor those 15 minutes, uh, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, then 1 hour till the blood ends if there is no any, any kind of uh, those uh, reactions. So if there is a reaction, like you get those elevated, you get the rash, elevated temperature, aching, chills, tachycardia that's increasing heart rate, uh, increased uh, respiratory rate, and something which most of the time is ignored called oliguria or oliguric that is decreased urine output that means when you transfuse your patient you should also have a catheter or have a way of monitoring the urine output if you find the urine is reducing during transfusion then you have a renal problem and that transfusion should be stopped and also the other important team also get involved on uh, on on that uh, on over the same the patient may be, you, you watch also for the signs of allergy, you also watch for the signs of those febrile thing. If you see the patient developing uh, high temperatures, it's very important. Uh, we also have after the transfusion, like you can get a patient getting a rare but deadly kind of, uh, uh, of thing after transfusion, which is called TVHD, that is graft versus host disease. Graft uh, versus uh, host disease, which normally is uh, Adonis T lymphocytes, where, uh, which cause immune response in the recipient, uh, in the recipient, by engrafting the marrow of the recipient and attacks the recipient's tissues. So the T lymphocytes of the uh, of the immune system attacking the the, the bone marrow of those who, who has received the, the blood. It can be very bad and it can cause a uh, uh, rash all over the body, fever, nausea, and also liver inflammation. And at the end of the day, cause kind of uh, death for the patient. So other complications which the patient may have also, we may have septicemia, that's blood is contaminated. We may have uh, disease transmission, uh, which is very rare, but it happens like things like uh, hepatitis B, and also hepatitis and also C and also hepatitis B and C. We also have HIV and other infections. So we also have what we call circulatory overload. So you should also watch your patient who is at risk on circulatory overload, especially the patient who is receiving a lot of this blood. Uh, we, as much we want to prevent circulatory overload. So give according to prescription and also monitor the same with the, with your doctor over the same so it's very important as much as this uh, helps so uh, you should be very careful when you are administering this uh, this uh, uh, blood it, it is helping life it's improving life of your patient but also it can be very detrimental and you may lose your patient at the end of the day and that is the worst which can happen in uh, in the field of practice so uh when you, when there is a blood reaction very important there's something which some things which should be done first thing you should stop the transfusion uh, and also disconnect the blood tubing uh, and also what you after after disconnecting because the blood is likely to clog, uh, especially the vein where you put your you put your blood, so you should connect the normal saline. That's why I told you you have 0, 0.9 normal saline, uh, sodium chloride, uh, where you you could hang, you will start running it to flush the 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 blood in the system. Also, you should you should uh, notify whoever prescribed that uh, blood uh, over the, on on the reaction. And uh, you should be, be there monitoring uh, the vital signs every uh, five seconds, which is very important, so that you don't get your patient into, so that you get to get the best for, for your patient as appropriate. So the, stop the transfusion, you disconnect, 
the blood tubing and are replaced with the with the with normal with normal saline with a new uh, with a new kind of uh, those uh, uh, so guys on those uh, when there is a reaction it's very important that you stop your uh, transmission don't insist on finishing it so you should uh, call your whoever prescribed that is your medical doctor or your physician and are not of the reaction and you should be there monitoring your patient actually it is recommended that you stay with your patient on the bedside till the health comes because uh, the reaction can be very uh, very very bad on the patient at the same time now you go to uh, emergency management like you can administer the corticosteroids you have around especially if you have hydrocortisone you can give it uh, to the patient as appropriate as you consult also with the with your doctor to help the patient most important thing also don't throw that uh, the, the, the the blood tubing if, uh, the blood where the blood was being contained the, that the blood bag and also the giving set there because at some point the lab people may want to take a retest and also check if the computer, there's a problem with compatibility and some information is also shared to the blood bank to find out where the problem is or of, of the blood because the blood may be well packaged it really shows it's compatible with your patient but maybe other issues which the patient is not is not responding well to so very important when doing blood transfusion uh, make sure that you do uh, those baseline checkup and also monitor your patients very closely according to the protocol of the hospital because those protocols are there because uh, something has been done some studies have been done for your for the safety of uh, of the patient and make sure the patient is also consents to the blood transfusion as i've said in the in the video so that in case of any problem the patient has already agreed to agree to it so that we don't get into legal medical issues which are unnecessary because like any other treatment blood transfusion is treatment and we want uh, and some, but sometimes it goes haywire and we get into other problems guys welcome to our video welcome to our channel Suture talks is your channel kindly if you are not subscribed find the link below subscribe and i want to welcome you to our next video guys thank you very much and peace thank you guys